Gentlemen and the Tim's flagship episode 329. I'm your host Jamie and I'm joined by Melly. Yes. And Stephen. Hello. Hello Stephen. <laughs> we're, back, we're back to normal. We're fully videoed. We're fully audioed. And Patreon. Dot com slash 20 minute Tims is still the place where you can support this podcast. You can support us from as little as £2.30 a month if you want extra podcasts, extra writing, extra videos. That is the place to get it. And it's a January transfer window, so every player that Celtic bring in, we're going to have them scouted. We've got the Friday phone in coming up, Stephen, the patrons' yep. favourite podcast dropping this month. We've got the Breakfast of Champions, which drops every week. So it's like a it's like the flagship's little brother every single week. We drop that on patreon.com slash 20 minute Tims. You've heard us talk about it plenty of times, but that is the place to go. If you like and enjoy the podcast, January transfer window, Stephen. Big things happening <laughs> yeah. in the window. Um, a lot of rumours flying about today. Juranovic possibly out, although that one's been bubbling away for a while. Yakimakis possibly out. That's been bubbling away for a while. Dies in Maeda. I know. Oh, I... It's getting getting watched by Southampton. Hopefully they're not watching them too closely because we don't want to desperately don't want to get rid of him. Stephen Welsh, a strange one, potentially out, backlinked with moves to Serie A and the MLS. Today, um, we might as well start on the Uran- Uranovic one. Stephen McGowan uh, came out with some news this morning that Monza, I have to make sure I'm not call him Monzo, which is something different. Monza are uh, <laughs> eyeing him with a loan until the end of the season, then a compulsory £7 million purchase. And I've got to say, um, listeners and watchers might remember you and I had a bit of a ding dong battle a couple of weeks ago, Melly, about these players leaving and where they were going and why they can't keep them. But I'll tell you something, Stephen, that one to me is a peculiar one. Underwhelming, isn't it? Mm. It's all a little bit underwhelming. After, I mean, I, I don't know how much was ever in these things anyway, but after going through probably six months now of links to Atletico Madrid, Chelsea, Man United, mm. or various other European giants, Juranovic is now linked with Silvio Berlusconi's Monza. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> horny old goat. <laughs> I, you know what? I, I really need to be careful there, right? Because I know my, I'm no too up in my Italian politics and I know he's probably mired in scandal. No. So, yeah, so I don't want to be just... <laughs> Don't say, oh, I can't believe you called him a, a horny old goat when he murdered eight people or whatever. <laughs> I, I don't know anything about the man, but I do know that he is disgusting. Well, more, <laughs> most recently in the news because, what was it? Off, he off of his team, a sex party or off something. Off of his team, full of many W words, I think, yeah. which is another word for what you just said there. Mm. Um, yeah. Got to admire the fact that he's 86 years old and still a dirty old bastard. Yeah, <laughs> Silver so, so th- his next dirty move is to try and take uh, Juranovic <laughs> from Celtic. Now, his greatest crime, you might, you <laughs> might say. Well, no, but hold on, right? Because the Discord was on fire with this. The Discord is a, an all in benefit for all in patrons. And it's the best Celtic community online, the Discord. You really want to get involved in that. People are debating that about, oh, it's a good move, it's a bad move. Off, oh, if he wants to go, let him go. And, not, and the, all the back and forth, back and forth. That move is crap. That that pe- yeah. he was setting alight the World Cup. Not four weeks ago, people were talking about how good his performances were. The, the, the football watching world, anyone that's kept tabs on him, will go. That was that guy that was playing, done really well in the World Cup. He played in the Champions League with Celtic. He's playing for Celtic, lined up with big moves. And then they see what he turns out for Monza. Was uh-huh. sure. I mean. Backward step. That's that. That's for, that's a backward step for me. But they're like thirteenth or something in Serie A at the moment. They're uh, never going to win the thing. No, no. There's no doubt about how it's a it's a backward step in in most terms. I, I don't really know how you how you kind of come to terms Prepare with the for the Monza fans in uh, the comments <laughs> now. <laughs> I, 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 it kind of furthers my theory that the World Cup doesn't really matter. Everyone see mm. during the tournament, everybody's full of the absolute like tournament fever. It was the World Cup. This World Cup. That. Then when it's finally gone. It's kind of a distant memory and football just moves on. He comes back, he plays absolutely terribly in his first game back and thing, uh, I think the World Cup just doesn't really come into these things. Aye, it was good against Brazil, but really what does that matter in the grand scheme of things? I don't think that clubs looking at him will have compiled all this information over a period of time. I don't mm. think clubs sign players off the back of World Cups anymore. That's all a little bit sort of Euro 86 and... Uh, Euro 2000 know, but at the same time it does somewhat enhance your profile it gets you it would help to maybe get some eyes on oh, you yeah, oh, right. without uh, a doubt without a doubt but yeah I don't think just the due diligence will yeah. come into that though I don't think clubs will make a rash signing off the back of who was it played. Rangers signed did they know Selenko oh, Selenko yeah, yeah. remember the, it was Karol Poborski they went to Man United because he scored an amazing goal in Euro 86 and he was absolutely <laughs> terrible so I just I don't think that kind of thing really happens mm. anymore it, I mean, it didn't do him any harm, but I just don't think that 
usually you, know, you see fans doing the sums. It's like, right, he's worth seven million. He's worth 12 million. He's played well in the World Cup. That's at 20 now. Where I just don't think the buying club are probably thinking along those lines. The... The fee of it is... Aye, let's, t- let's split uh, it in two because there's there's two elements here. There's the fee and then there's the move itself. Yeah. And I think it's in- important because there's two separate discussions to be had there. So the fee. Yeah, the, the fee is very underwhelming. But I think that Ish. it's £7 million, as is rumoured just now. That might not be the case, but Stephen McGowan mm. is usually pretty across these things. It's very underwhelming, but I, again, that's maybe just the reality of it. We make, we're fond of making comparisons usually when it comes to transfers. So Kieran Tierney's worth X... Aaron Juan Bissaka is worth why, mm-hmm. therefore Juranovic must be in somewhere in the ballpark, somewhere between that or something, right? Okay. But the reality is, sometimes or oftentimes, the market just dictates what you're worth. The old adage, you're only worth what a club is willing to pay mm. for you. If clubs are coming in at around seven million, and again, I, I will stress that I'm disappointed by that. I don't think Celtic could possibly say, I bet he played in the World Cup, so therefore we're holding it for 20. No, that just I, won't happen. I'm no, not saying you're saying that. No, no, I know you're not. But yeah. what, the way, way I disagree with you here is, the way these things probably work is that his agent will have had the conversation with Celtic and Celtic going, well, we'll probably look at offers in and around 7 million or whatever. Yeah. To me, that's low ball. To ah, me, yeah. that, that's... I mean, what did we spy him for? 2.5 million? Yeah. yeah and we're get, so, it's not really... It's not... It's good news and irrelevant news, really. <laughs> we're, we're, get, we're getting for the Juranovic transfer. The fee is okay, but my problem with the fee, Melly, is it's only seven million. We we should be we do buy players about the seven million mark. And Juranovic was one of our top players last season. He's a top. He's one of the top players in the squad. We've done this the tier builder thing. We love the guy. We think he's one of the better players on the team. Very impressed by how he's come along. And we're letting him go for seven million. I mean. It's it's really really it's washers. Uh, it's a it's a strange one because when Miranovic was linked with these moves, you think, well, okay, look, Atletico Madrid, Chelsea, Man United, can not really stop that? Can we? We can't no. really say to a guy, oh, look, don't go to the Premier League or the Spanish League. With this one, ah, you're going to the Italian League. You'll be playing in a better standard weekly. You'll you'll be playing Ross County four times a season. But Monza, I mean, come on. Look, Where's the... Camonza. Camonza. <laughs> Where's the... We, we, when players leave, unless they've been poor, we want players to make a step up if they're leaving Celtic, and this doesn't feel like a step up. I'm not sure what the script is. It seems to have come out of nowhere and as if it's happening, but... After... I think he's in too much of a rush. I think what's happening here is he knows the clock's ticking on his career, something that we've yeah. discussed, and he's like, I need to make moves quick. I can't hang about too long. I can't afford to be somewhere for three years, so I need to get a move quick. And I think his agents probably said to the club, look, the guy wants to go and Celtic are like, right, well, we'll entertain reasonable offers and his agent's doing his best to get him a move. That's why there's low things in. But I think he's been badly advised because Champions League this year, World Cup, I know you say it doesn't count for much, but it still yeah. increases your profile. It's something his agent will definitely have clips of his performances in the World Cup on the DVD that he's <laughs> posting out to people. <laughs> the VHS. Uh, the VHS. Landing tape. on desks but across you know Europe. I mean, these, these will yeah. feature. Come the summer, You've got to think his options are better. Why would you tie yourself into a Monza move in January to 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 go obligatory and just play this? Just play the next five six months in Scotland and make your mind up in the summer. Yeah, it's a strange one. I really don't get it at all. I think when he he was linked with other clubs, you go right, okay, we've brought in another player. He's done well in the Champions League. Maybe he thinks he's done it all at Celtic. I but I don't want you to go to a, a Midland team in Italy. Like fair enough, it's a decent league, but. Oh, mate, I, I don't understand it from his point of view either. He's probably at the peak of his career right now in terms of reputation and all that, and to settle for that. I mean, I know it's not, well, it is a quite a big gauge these days, but Fabrizio Romano's t- touting him a lot, so I'm guessing mm. his agent's speaking to him, and for all the touting he's done from a end up at Monza, would be a real disappointment, because I think he's a good player. I still think he could be a good player for Celtic, even though we have brought in somebody to replace him, but... Then again, you're looking for players when they do go and they have been like fan favourites. Somewhere good, mate, where we can yeah. say, do you know what? Fair play to you. Can I give him a fair play on this one? I, I mean, no. uh, Stephen, he, he, he's probably going to be earning bags over there. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's definitely a money move for him. He'll be increasing his wages from whatever to obviously more than Celtic can pay because I suspect, well, maybe not. I suspect Yakimakis we'll talk about is a different case. So it's obviously just for the money. It's for me, it's just not, it's not for pre- pre- Career progression. Well, it could be lifestyle as well. Yeah. I mean, I, mean I, don't, I don't know what Monza is like to live. I'm pretty but sure that's where 
it might be where they make Ferraris. It oh, might really? Be, right. uh, maybe. Oh, yeah, maybe. I know there's a racetrack there. Yeah, that's right. So it, it may be a sort of lifestyle thing. It may have just been given an offer that is very appealing. We again, we, an offer I can't refuse. And again, that that's something we are fond of doing as fans. We we project all these aspirations and ambitions onto players. We be, what we believe they should want from their career. Mm. We don't we don't really take into account the, the sort of human level of it. Yeah. We we think I but you should stay and win yeah. trophies and stay and win trophies. We offer you this. We've got this amount of fans with European football. He might be like, Well, I, I've kind of had I've had a couple of years of that. Now I want to move to Italy. I want to see what that's like. I want a different lifestyle. I, I'm only speculating there. I've not spoken to him, but there are always <laughs> different angles to it. It's not like he's moving to Hull or something but like I know, that. But see, this is my problem, right? Sometimes Sorry to any Hull viewers. Uh, it's, uh, it's, this is this is my my beef here, right? And yeah. we do it in this podcast quite a lot. And sometimes football fans get you've somebody's got to defend the Celtic supporter here who likes watching Juranovic. We can't yeah, just yeah. put our hands up and go, "Oh, do you know what? Fair enough. Maybe the guy fancies a wee holiday. Maybe he likes it. Maybe he's really fond of pasta and tomato sauce, and he wants to go." It's it's uh, stere- gruesome stereotyping <laughs> there, but you know what I mean. We can't just. Shrug her hands up and I'm looking at this going, but hold on a minute. <laughs> like mama's home cooking. Uh, yeah. I'm just like, I, I'm looking, I'm really bewildered by this transfer. It is because all, all the talk was, oh, I want to go, I want to progress my career. We made the same assumptions. We, we're saying, well, you can't put assumptions on the guy. We assumed that the reason he wanted to leave Celtic was because big clubs were in for him yeah. and he wanted to play yeah, at the highest yeah, level. Right. Now it turns out the reason he's leaving Celtic is because he might get a few extra thousand, never playing the Champions League again, fade into it. Uh, in- insignificance and in the bumbling about the bottom end of the Italian league yeah there was players like uh, Afra Boric who stated that I, I want to play in Serie A in, in my career and mm. that's when he got the move to Fiorentina after Celtic so you go right fair enough Fiorentina story club in Italy a big mm. club but with this one it's exactly what you're saying like right on you go mate in the past what two years we've seen like Edward Ayer Christie all go down to Premier League teams or Christie's team eventually got there and you go right okay I get that it's the the league that most players want to be in. And he could get be at that to. level. I think that's why we're yeah. frustrated. He yeah, could be playing exactly. That level. And you think, right, see if he went down to England. And I think it's at the point where any English team are going to be able to pay masses more than Celtic. So you go, right, fair enough. You want to play in the best league. You want to test yourself. English teams are different because all of them have got money. When you go to a team like Monza down there, look, they might be a sort of ambitious club, but. There's so many more clubs out there for mm. you that we would go, do you know what? I understand that. I don't understand this one. No, very peculiar. Well, see, a final thing, and don't take this the wrong way, guys, or anyone listen. Why, why, do, why does anyone want Juranovic to go to a, a bigger club and a better league and all that? Is it for him? Do you think, oh, mate, come on, you should have yes. went to a bigger club? Or is it really secretly what I believe and mm. you kind of want to have the credit for it? You want Celtic to have produced a player for the top level. And that as well, yes. Because both. Because really, that's a, but that's a selling point that Celtic yeah. sell to players. We we produce, we can take you, turn you into produce you for a player for the top level. If we yeah. stop doing that, if we start shipping players to Monza for seven million pounds <laughs> and such and such for five million pounds and MLS for three million pounds and that model disappears, then we've got nothing to sell to players. So so the you're right, it is twofold. And yet we are looking at Juranovic going, it's like don't leave us for that. Leave us for something else. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Go, go, go he's a likable better. guy as well. Yeah. He seems to, as soon as he came in, he sort of got it. To, fireball, that was uh, a good Fireball, meme, good meme all that sort of stuff. Celtic. So he came in, he was a likable character. He was a very good player for us. And you're like, just go on and do something. We've all we're, we're done well in the World Cup. I like seeing that. And then for this to come about, you're like, it just doesn't sit right with me. Yeah. Well, there is, there is that. And... I, just, I think this is a specific case though I don't think it does signal an end to us being able to produce players for the, the next level as I said a couple of weeks ago this is probably phase one of the Ange Postacoglu re- revolution we've brought in a load of 26, 27, 28 year olds mm. I think selling Juranovic on to a, you know, an admittedly middling level I don't think that interferes with that too much because what we usually do is take 21, 22 year olds play them for a couple of seasons and then move them on to England or France or whatever when they're about 25, 26 Juranovic has kind of skipped that part. 18 months ago, he was playing for Legia Warsaw. Mm. So we've kind of turned him around and now he's going to go to Serie A. We, we might have 
opened that door to him, whereas I don't think playing in Serie A would probably be an option for him when he was back playing in Liga also. Again, uh, we've we've kind of done this on this one occasion. I don't think it says any more than just well, this maybe, is his trajectory. Maybe not, but I mean, we're not really, apart from Matt O'Reilly, we're not really signing a lot of 20-odd-year-old, 21-year-olds. Yeah. In fact, it's happening the opposite way. All our sort of young players with any sort of promise, we're losing them. You know, the guys that, yeah. the guys that we're losing them before we even get a chance to get them. So, I, 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 I agree that it's no doomsday stuff here. It's not like, oh no. my God, Celtic are not going to play a trade model but doesn't exist anymore, blah, 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 blah. Juranovic wants to go, we're, we bought him for two and a half million. It might be a single case where, okay, we're getting seven million for him when he goes. But also we need to kind of be careful a wee bit because we're not signing 21-year-olds. Matt O'Reilly <laughs> no. aside, but most of the players we've signed recently being 25, 26, 27, we've signed them for four, five odd million quid. You're like, well, that only works out if you're getting big money for them and if this isn't, this to me isn't big money. The difference where Juranovic is the stage he's at in his career the age he is like there's not a lot of teams that target 27 28 year old players anymore is there and no. he's uh, in the place now where if he's going to leave Celtic it has to be now or the summer to like, sort of get a bigger move so to speak so this is the one where it's a wee bit different with these players in it because it's hard to make profit on guys over 27 28 unless they are doing incredibly well Juranovic doesn't quite fall in that bracket when he was linked with Atletico Madrid, Chelsea, Man United. I'm like, oh, fair enough, good move. But teams like that don't usually buy a guy at that age. No. So yeah, it, it would just, just be a sort of stopgap or a, a short term move. And we are lucky that we've got AJ and we'll talk about him when it comes to Kamarnock. But he looks like he's going to fit in there and they bother. You yeah, know, we, yeah. we look, but again, that's not always the case. We shouldn't just be happy to lose 27 year old players for medium budgets to medium clubs because that's the new model now, because there will come a time where you, you we won't always be able to strike that replacement. Yeah. You know, it's so... In saying that as well, we have signed AJ. If you add that to the fee of Juranovic, we're getting more from this, those two combined back off Juranovic. So Celtic have made profit, bought a player and yeah. sold the guy on. What so, is AJ? He's 25 odds as well, isn't he? Uh, 24, 25 maybe uh, or so something he's, like, yeah. he's not the youngest. So as far as I could tell, Juranovic went... Tried winning things once. Tried the Champions League once. Didn't like it. <laughs> Got to go in Nazareth. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, don't underestimate Celtic's part in this as well because they will know that he's at his peak. He's yeah, at his peak I, value like, as well. I They'll be chasing I, him at the door. I know what you're saying, Stephen. Reading between the lines, Stephen's saying, low ball bids, <laughs> transfer disharmony. He's back a couple of weeks. <laughs> he's a back, a, back a couple of weeks. That's what we, Steve, we did warn you there. Yeah, I did warn you. No, I'm not but, saying that. That's what Stephen said. We're reading, we're reading between the lines. But this is what's going to come out because Celtic employed this guy again, yeah. isn't it? So, yeah. Well, that, well, well, that, well, that's what's going to happen. So we've got that bewildering transfer out of the way. Uh, if it goes ahead, um, I'd, I should say um, Steve McGowan did report that, that that was kind of happening. That was on the cards. But it's also worth noting um, I've noticed I'm not actually looking to the camera quite as much because we've not been on video for the past couple of weeks, so apologies. But he, he, Mark Hendry, another journalist who's usually on the ball, has also yeah. said that the, the, the loan aspect might not actually be part of it, so it might just be a straight transfer. So wh however it happens, if he ends up in the Monza shirt by the end of January, it's going to be very, very, very peculiar for me. And another Underwhelming, yeah. Yeah, another underwhelming, peculiar transfer. Uh, Yakimakis is going to Stephen, without me looking down at the laptop, remind me. Urawa Red Diamonds. Urawa yeah, Red Diamonds. To play alongside, what's his name? Schalk. Yeah, the former Ross County hitman, <laughs> Alex Schalk. Well, look, everyone has their dreams here. <laughs> yeah. how, how can you pass that so, up? So, Stephen, you were playing sort of cent centrist Celtic dad. <laughs> you were playing centrist yes. dad on this on this transfer. That's why I'm here. That's why make, I'm here. make that one make sense. <laughs> All right, so oh, he's reached peak value. He's 27. Come on. Right, well... <laughs> Those things, right? We'll take take those as red. Um, th those are those are definitely factoring in. Yakimakis to Urawa Red Diamonds, and again, we're we're just speculating. This mm. is just the news of the day, isn't it? That's these why are, we have a podcast. Yeah, th that's it. These are the headlines. It, it might not go through, but these are the kind of strong reports in the last twenty four hours or so as we sit down to record. Yakimakis potentially to Urawa Red Diamonds in the J League. Peculiar, um, to oh, be honest. Peculiar, isn't it? Yeah. I, the thing is, I don't, I don't see Yakimakis. I don't think he was ever going to be on the same trajectory as even Juranovic. We're taking the age out of it. Well, again, the age is always going to play into it, but I don't think Yakimakis was ever going to arrive at Celtic at twenty-seven and then go to Southampton uh -huh. or Aston Villa. He could go to Hull. Yeah, he could go to Hull. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he could go. But is that again? Is that just a personal choice? It just fancies Japan. Why not? The thing about Urawa Red Diamonds is, I would be astonished if he was likely to be on. 
much more than he would get at Celtic. It's not mm. like he's moving to you remember China like five years ago yeah. they were they were throwing silly money about in you know the MLS or, the, or the Saudi Arabia or something like that. Yeah. It's, not, it's not like he's going there. Japan don't throw crazy money at a mm. player like Yakimakis, I wouldn't have thought. So so it seems it seems a strange one, unless it is just Again, he's he's just on this sort of train. His his career is all of a sudden just picked up, gathered momentum. What can I get out of it? Well, yeah. I still can because I don't think his potential is much lower than Juranovic's, in my opinion. He's a really good player, and I really like him. Mm. But I just I don't see a guy like that, like a big centre forward, appealing to somebody in the Bundesliga or in the Premier League or anything like that. I, I just don't. I can't like really I, particularly see it. I, Japan's odd though. I do. It is, it is odd to me, and it's just this is the point I made to you. It's like. A couple of weeks ago, and I'll make it again for people that can't remember or don't listen religiously. Um, <laughs> um, did sh- why did he want to leave? Should Celtic not offer a player as much as Urawa Red Diamonds and Monzo can? I'm not. I'm not criticising the Monza. club. Monza. Monza. <laughs> nearly got all the way through without <laughs> saying Monza. Monzo. Um, should Celtic not? I mean, should we not have an environment in a club? Here that people want to come out and stay at. I mean, I could understand when Ange gave us don't don't you know don't hold on to your heroes too long. We could we seen the back of some guys sooner than you think. You go, God, does that mean we're going to get forty million for Jota? Does that mean we're no? He's shuffling off to Japan and shuffling off to the the, the bottom of Syria for <laughs> pennies. It's not really the big dream that I thought. So, is there something here that is there a wider issue here? Again, no criticising Celtic, but we should we should be we should be buying. Him from Monza. We should be buying him from your Rabbit Dead Diamonds. These are the players that we should be bringing to the club and keeping and who would be successful here. No, the other way about. Yeah, that, this is even more peculiar than <laughs> Juranovic because you look at it and say, look, Celtic brought this guy in. he done well in his first, the second half of his first season. He again became a fan favourite. Look, he's not the best technically on the ball. He is 28 now, isn't he? He is one of the guys you think, right, Celtic could probably have him for the rest of his contract and then he'll leave and that'll yeah, be it. Yeah. If, I mean, he does want to stay. He did want more money from Celtic. That's what he wanted. Yeah, and I think the deal was he comes in. One man they, comes in the door and all of a sudden. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Pistol Pete's back. <laughs> but the, the thing with Yakimakis is he came in, he done well and you think, right, okay, let's negotiate again. So surely in the negotiations, Celtic offered them a pay rise of some sort. And then for a Japanese team to come in, you're like, I can maybe give Juranovic the benefit of the doubt. Look, look, you get to play in Serie A, you're getting up against better teams on a weekly basis. This one, I can't defend it at all. Because we're signing the best players from that league. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And when Giacomacus as well, as you say, like you can maybe say, look, Monza will probably pay him more, a better lifestyle. With this one, it's a totally different culture. I'm not going to, and judge what the guy wants in his career but I can't really see how this works out well for him because once you go out there you're kind of forgotten about and look he has been a guy that's been at a club for one two seasons he's on this career trajectory where he's at the peak at, but surely playing at Celtic is better for your career at this point than going to Japan for me so I can't it just it's ever it? so close to labelling Japan a, a backwater we've well, well, fought it's, so it's... hard to well, it's not a backwater no. as such, but I think what Melly's saying but is everybody else is trying to get to Europe from Japan, whereas he's I going. Am, I, I think. I, I think what Melly's saying is it's a it is it's a move that comes with a degree of risk for a player of his profile and age because if he goes there for eighteen months and doesn't really like it, he's unlikely to return to the level of Celtic. No, no, that's true. At twenty nine years old or whatever, having been in Japan and and he, I mean he's he had a couple of injuries here. He's no first choice here. You know, it's not like. He's, deter- he's destined to go there and set the J-League alight because we're seeing the quality of the players we're bringing in from the J-League. They're keeping him out of the Celtic team. Well, that's true, yeah. I, yeah. I don't fancy your chances much if you're <laughs> leaving here to get away from all these Japanese <laughs> players. Good luck over there, yeah. I know. Okay, I, it's very odd. Again, we, we can only... We're just kind of whirling ar- around here I looking for it reasons. Happening, to be honest. Yeah, but... it's, it's a very odd one, but, but we're just sort of spinning around here looking for reasons that this might happen. Mm. And, but we're, the truth is, we're none the wiser. I, we just can't really understand why he would end up being linked with such an odd move. You could understand maybe if Ange, was... Maybe Ange wants him out and he's uh, like, look, we can't get rid of this guy. Make a few phone calls, Ange, and Ange just phoned his buddy in Japan. I meant, look, I got a striker for you. Yeah, and, and without adding yet another layer of pure unfounded speculation to it. Maybe, <laughs> Yakimakis again, total speculation, maybe he deserves credit for wanting to go to Japan if his other options are MLS, Saudi Arabia, 
Qatar yeah, or something maybe. like that, where he probably could double or treble his money, and he, he just wants to go and yeah, to to a team where he looks around. Well, there must be quality footballers there because we've got six of them. Uh, so well, yeah, uh, maybe, maybe he's like, a, <laughs> aye, there's a lot of good players out there. It yeah. sounds like a place I want to go and play football, and he's heard good things. About and I stress it. again, I've completely made that up. Mm. So, but that's me part of the Scottish media. We did. Look at Jack and Marcus when he first signed and said, this is a bit of a strange one when you look into his career. Wasn't that, he didn't score many goals and all of a sudden he's just hit this goal scoring form. He can't, he can't even call it a purple patch anymore because he's no. been doing it for two or three years now. So this is where you expect him to go, right, Europe, he suits the game in a lot of places. He suited it in uh, I, uh, Ajax in uh, Holland mm. and he's suited at Celtic. So you kind of expect, like, why did Celtic sign this guy? That Because top scorer in the uh, the Dutch league, which is a decent level, you know some players don't work out from there, but for Celtic to get him for so cheap and nobody else to be in, in for him, we were looking at, like, what's the catch here? Mm. There must be something here. He's, he's not your typical striker you get from there. And to see him now, I just think, look, if it's a choice between Celtic and Japan, I can't see anything for a guy born in Europe going over there yeah. at this stage in his career when he is playing for Celtic he has played in the Champions League yes he's not first choice but where are you going to go in Europe that you're getting the levels you're getting at Celtic you're going to get medals yes you're going to get he probably get called up for Greece again and he's playing in the Champions League I don't see him going anywhere he'll get that he's the kind of guy that if Celtic sell for 8 to 10 million I don't think you'll really hear much from mm, him again no. whereas I think he's perfect for Celtic right now because if he goes up to a higher level, I think he'll get found out. So I don't know what he's thinking would, here. Would it make more sense if the offer was 20 million quid? Because then you would think there's some money behind it. Yeah. There's, there's some money behind it. But if it was like another five to seven million, again, I would be disappointed. We are looking at bringing in another striker to replace him. And obviously, on the pure spreadsheetness of it, one player moves out, you replace him with a player who's equally good. We don't really care. No, you don't, you, you don't really care half You've the time. Tripled the money on it as well in eighteen months. Mm. If, if these and had a good player. If both, I if you if we strip it back to the bare numbers of it, both of these examples are guys who roughly have come in for two and a half million, played really well for eighteen months. They've got into their sort of peak athletic prime, about to sort of tip over into no longer worth quite as much. Mm. And you've tripled tripled the, the money on both of them. On the bare numbers of it, that is quite good. It's just that I refuse to do that as a football <laughs> fan. I refuse yeah, to yeah. go out down to that. Exactly. Play. You can't just strip away the personality and the the match going, not even just so much, not even just match going, just the fan experience. You, you can't just strip those things away. So even if you do tart it up as good bit of business, it's still pish, isn't it? Yeah. It's, still, it's still very disappointing at the end of the day. It's pish as a fan because <laughs> you, you do. You do get attached to players and Ange told us not to, but you, you can't help it a lot of the time. These are two guys that you're like, where are we going to get a right back? Where are we going to get a striker? Turns out we end up with two good strikers and we barely mention Odson Edward anymore. And Juranovic, you're like, oh, Brimpong doesn't get a mention much, but uh, you, these guys are at an age where it's now or never for them. But at the same time, looking at it from maybe Celtic's point of view or maybe from Ange, where he goes like that, look, Get these guys out because this is the right time. Maybe the guys want to go, whatever, yeah. but we've seen it in the past from Celtic with it and always bring them back. Guys like Izagiri and Kyle look decent for a season or, or over. That's when you cash in on these guys. I don't think they were ever long term guys that were going to be brilliant for like four, five, six no. seasons and then you get rid of them uh, for big money. I think it might just be the case now that right two or three seasons this is them at their peak maybe it's now the right time to get rid of them even though for us as fans like less than 10 million for either of these players will be quite disappointing but if Celtic went out and bought a striker and he was as good or we'd probably get a bit better technical striker than Yakimakis maybe not a more effective one but if we can get somebody in to replace him who is as good or better well, kind well, of forget is, about it and Celtic have got a replacement in well, for this is yeah. one thing I want to mention you know to give Celtic some credit and just to touch you're right we do have an emotional attachment to these players but you know emotion, you can, they can be bought emotions can yeah. be bought <laughs> and yeah. you know, better emotions <laughs> yeah. Yeah. emotions can be bought and I'm, I'm more emotionally attached to Juranovic than £7 million you yeah. know, up at a wee bit and I'd be I'd be hard I'd look the other way but maybe to give Celtic some credit Stephen maybe Andrew's looked at these players sees them trading every day he's seen AJ Obviously we've been scouting him for maybe a year or so Or a couple of months So I'm just like I am perfectly comfortable Perfectly confident that AJ can replace your Anovich no bother Sorry to jump in mm. there But 
there might be something in that as well going on from what I was saying because these guys were came in and Celtic were like how many right backs last year we missed yeah. out or we gives up so many times yeah. and we we ended up with Juranovic Juranovic might have been well down the pecking order and now Ange has been in a lot of time to go look he was brought in as a sort of stop gap and we can go out now sell him replace him so if we sell Juranovic and bring in Johnston and a striker kind of doing things the right way but again we're surmising here aren't yeah, we? Yeah well that, and that's the same thing we could have we could we could be giving Celtic way too little credit Celtic or could too have much. or too much but <laughs> Celtic they could be sitting there with um, another striker lined up I know we're, we're linked with Cho we're chasing him and Angel will be going look Angel could be sitting there going this is a no brainer this guy that I'm trying to bring in is 10 times the player Yakimakis so if you get any if we can make any sort of money on this guy don't don't pay him more money no worth it I've got a list here Five, six names all can do a better job. I'd like and to that's think the way so. it should yeah. be. I'd, I'd certainly like to think that that is it. It's not, you know, we're not having our, our best players chased out from underneath us because, you know what, they're not our best players either. No, they're, they're not correct. our best players. They're, they're in a kind of second tier of, of Celtic players. As popular as they are, they are replaceable. Juranovic has been brilliant for Celtic, but I think we've seen a couple of times in very recently in fact has been brutally exposed he is a deeply flawed player yeah. he's, a, he's a deeply flawed fullback. he's not going to improve either is no. it? you're giving it the old fancy you anyway pal. <laughs> <laughs> shouting lesbian anyway <laughs> after a knockback <laughs> I don't know <laughs> I know but, but he has he, he's got he's got mm. deficiencies in his defensive work uh, which aren't going to get better at his age mm. so I'd like to think that it is a case of and just looked at it We've we've known for a long time that Ange's fairly ruthless when it comes to these things. The exact opposite of Neil Lennon when it comes to yes, these things. He gets very yes. attached to footballers, um, very attached to, to his players, had massive favourites. Celtic as a club, never mind Neil Lennon, have famously held on to players for far too long. Maybe Ange has just toned that up and go, like, right, I've had my use of him and we've got a replacement already, so no harm done. Yeah. You know, again, he has already... Um, not quite apologised, but almost apologised to the fans for him you're bringing this model to Celtic, but we need to kind of get used to it. And he has said in the past, Angie's gone, because I've only got time for players that want to be here. You Aye, know? Yeah, and, exactly. that, and he's made yeah. that time. So maybe there's a, a culture of where, like, look, you've got your contract, that's nothing to do with me, but as soon as you start making noises about you wanting to leave, right, you're gone. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I just I just don't, that's not the way I run the club, and that's that's absolutely fine. I but, always put it back to the Izagiri one, because Izagiri was brilliant in his first season, then he got injured, didn't he? And then he stayed at Celtic, wasn't as good, left, we re signed him. And you're like, mental. See, yeah. Still mental thinking about that. <laughs> but if he had a left after 18 months, like, what a player he's. Well, mm. like from Prong or like Dembele, even though he stormed out on Celtic two seasons, what a player best since Larson and all that. So mm. the shorter time you do well at Celtic, the better you're thought of in the long run, aren't you? So yeah. it's just one of these ones like, Right, lads, but where he's going, man? So, so we're quite happy. We're Two references to Emilio Izaguirre in this oh, one podcast yeah. in 2023. Imagine he was listening. I just can't believe he's lucky. <laughs> st still on the in the hearts and minds of the podcast. Three, two, one. Happy, happy New, New Year, Year from our friends at Manscaped. The ball has officially dropped, but that doesn't mean you have to drop the ball on your balls in 2023. <laughs> Whether you had a New Year's kiss or not, the leaders in the below the waist grooming have got you covered for your much needed resolution of bringing sexy back. Join the 7 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with our exclusive offer. Go to manscaped.com and use code TIMS for 20% off and free shipping. Let's have a toast for a new year, a new you, with no pubes. <laughs> It's a new year, new balls with the global leaders in below the waist grooming. This year, take your package to the next level with a Performance Package 4.0 and other premium wet goods. Inside the Performance Package 4.0, you'll find a signature Lawnmower 4.0. The advanced skin safe technology reduces cuts and nicks on your delicate parts. It also comes equipped with a 4000K LED spotlight that will shine a light to the promised land 2023 looks to be. Cheers to new balls in 2023. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code TIMS at manscaped.com that's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code TIMS time to feel sexy and free this 2023 with Manscaped so that's we were perfectly happy to see the back of Juranovic and we're perfectly happy to see the back of Yakimakis is that our conclusion is it <laughs> basically well I mean, Yakimakis has annoyed me a wee bit I mean I was a big Yakimakis fanboy at the beginning of the season as listeners and watchers will know but um, uh, he's annoyed me a wee bit recently and he's mm. been pretty his form's been pretty ropey as of late um, Maeda though no, no, no. No, no, I'm no, not having no, this. No, no, no. no. What, so what's, what's the story here then? He's been... He's, he's been, been watched by Southampton. Now, this right. is a player who you can see playing 
for example, he, 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 he would be a great fit for Southampton. That sort of Premier League Love team. strikers who don't really score goals. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely collect them down there <laughs> so you can just see, the, see them rubbing their hands mm. together at Maida. Another one. <laughs> <laughs> another, another one for Southampton. Another five goal a season striker. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely love them down there. Eh, uh, no, I'm not having this one. No, mm. absolutely not. I, the thing is, throw everything we've just said about those two players out, out the, in the bin, right? Mm. That is an appeal, regardless of what you think of it, regardless of what you might say, overrated, overhyped and all that sort of stuff. Players want to be in England. Yeah. That, that's the absolute reality of it. It's the biggest show on earth and people want to be in front of that kind of audience with the glitz and glamour playing against the best players in the world. The guys they they watch on the telly and all that, right? That That is an appeal. Southampton, not so much. I think like four or five years ago, Southampton would have been a great place for any player to go because they were a stable Premier League club who had... A, they still do. They've got an absolutely amazing track record of preparing players from a slightly lower level to the top. Mm. I mean, they've sold how many players to Liverpool and Man United over the over the years? Absolutely, been a while well. now, hasn't it? It has been a while. So that's what I mean. Four or five years ago, it was exactly the place to go to get that kind of springboard to the, the top level. Strong chance they're going to get relegated oh, this season, though. So that's yeah. the gamble. We've absolutely gone there. rooted. Three wins the rest of the uh, season. The, you'd, the, you'd... Absolutely terrible. They've changed managers and have lost every single league game since changing manager. Absolutely no bounce there. So uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't. I, again, I have to admit, I still see the appeal. It's still, it's still all the things I've just said. It's mm. still, it's still the stage that players want to play on. But yeah, you know, it's a risky move unless you want to desperately want to play in the championship, just like. Yakimakis is desperately wanting to play in the J League. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and Fjernanovic has always wanted to play for Monza. Maybe he's just choking to play in the championship. Right. We've sort of like, we've been fairly, tried to be fairly sensible and pragmatic about the other two, but I don't, I don't want Maeda to leave. I don't, oh, want no, him to no. go, I don't want him to leave for anyone, especially not this window. Don't go, Dyson. Don't do it. <laughs> I know yeah. we try not to get too attached to players, but I love him. I yeah, love yeah. everything about him. I love how he can be amazing one second and utterly pish the next <laughs> second. I just again, Do you hear that Southampton? You don't want him. You don't <laughs> he, want him. He, he's inconsistent, right? <laughs> but it's just everything he brings to it is it's incredible. The work rate and we see so many players coming to Celtic and just fail, just not look good. If he doesn't, if he doesn't do well at Celtic, which he has done already, it won't be through lack of effort. Because he gives that every time, and look, I don't want to be sitting here just saying, "Oh, hundred percent, that's all you need to show at Celtic," because it's not. But he has a bit of both. He gives you everything, and he can be a touch of class sometimes. It's crucial how we play as well. I mean, never. I mean, everything we've said about Juranovic and Yakimakis, these guys can be replaced. We can't replace Dyson Maeda. Not, no, not, not no. those. He's just so crucial to the way Ange wants to play the game. Yeah, I've never really seen a player like him. I can't, when we sign players like that, you can always go, ah, he's a bit like so-and-so. I can't think, Maeda is one in a million for me and he's, he would be difficult to replace. I don't think he's ever going to be one of these guys in 10 years' time you put him in your all-time Celtic Johnny 11. Hayes. Oh, <laughs> never let us down. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it all left-backs? <laughs> uh, so I, I don't think Maeda will quite be at that level, but I just think we'll always think fondly of him because... He does give everything, but he has that bit of quality as well, mm. and he does score big goals. So, look, I, I understand why these teams are watching him because teams like Southampton will think, right, that guy would fit in perfectly for us. We've seen it well, you know, saying Stuart Armstrong, maybe not the best technical players, but they are hard workers and they can pull off something. So, I can see why they're watching them. I just hope they don't bid for him because I, I love watching him play and I love watching him in a Celtic strip. Yeah, that's, that's a guy we don't want to see the back of for sure. No, and I'd be interested to see in any kind of valuation talk there because I would be desperately disappointed if he's run about the same because the reality is with bringing in these players from Japan on absolute pennies I don't I don't mean their salary I mean mm. we are paying absolutely nothing for these guys what was it 1.3 million for Hatati yeah. or something absolutely outrageous so we've not paid a lot of money for these guys yeah so, we are demanding millions uh, for so, 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 <laughs> so the, the reality is if Celtic again just looking at the bare numbers of it if you're looking in a Good bit of business sense. Mm -hmm. If you're looking at a guy like Juranovic, 2.5 million, get him for get rid of him for seven and a half or whatever, tripled your money. If you're going to be looking at selling Maida for three and a half million or something. Well, like I know. So that's <laughs> another thing about these fees that you've just touched on there. It's like it's not really anybody's concern what we paid for him. It's no. the market. You know, yeah. if you've got yes, like I don't yes. know a Rolex and I don't know I, I don't know why I do this with watches and boxing. I don't know the first thing about either. <laughs> but I pull these and someone goes, I'll give you. 10 grand for that Rolex but you know it's worth 20 very rarely do you go ah but this guy I only paid 2 grand for it so, you, you know, so I'm, I'm 5 times in my money here so we shouldn't yeah. we shouldn't really yeah. be looking at it we should be looking to sell these guys for full market value 
regardless of what we paid for yeah. him. We can get full market value for Maeda as well, but can't we? Because he's what, just six, well, nearly a year into his uh, deal, sorry, mm. and he's at an, a good age for teams like Southampton. That's the kind of profile they'll be looking for, whereas Giacomakis and Juranovic, probably these teams look beyond those guys mm. because they can, well, we can get somebody younger They'd who be, might Southampton be better. Southampton would be better signing Giacomakis if they want somebody to go down there and score and chip in with a few goals and rescue them and drag them off the bottom of the table. They'd be better off yeah. with yeah. Giacomakis and that would be a better move for Giacomakis. Oh, definitely, definitely. Hope they're lost, listening and watching. <laughs> yeah, all right, subscribe. Smash that subscribe <laughs> button, Southampton. Um, another guy that's on his way out the club. This is just turning a transfer round yeah, up, which uh, is quite nice. A wee uh, refreshing wee changer. Uh, Stephen Welsh. New year, new players. Yeah, yeah that's that's it. It. get the clear out. Um, Stephen Welsh, to which I say, I won't play football, son. Yeah, I think that's that's going to be the ultimate conclusion for a guy like that. I, I like Stephen Welsh. I've always mm. stuck up for him in the past. He's He's not the... He's not the greatest of defenders. His ceiling is probably quite low when it comes to when it comes to compared to the rest of the defenders at Celtic. But that's not his fault. He's just and we've the, got a lot of good defenders well, that's in the there. Key. There's a yeah. lot of them because apart from Starfelt and Carter Vickers, we've got Jens who barely gets a look yeah, in yeah. now. We've just signed Kobayashi, Kobayashi yeah. and we've got Awata who can play at centre back sometimes as well. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't expect to, to see him there, but it is an, another option. It is potentially another sticking point for Stephen Welsh. Stephen Welsh is quite promising for him though because despite the fact that it hasn't none of it's come to anything yet, he's always linked to. Really interesting moves. Right. He's never linked with the standard like Sheffield United Udinese or Udinese, uh, and I think there was a it's MLS was it, this time uh, around. It was MLS? Well, again, it's, it's interesting at least. Uh, he says patronisingly. There's obviously an agent doing some work there, isn't there? Because a few young Scottish players like Lewis uh, Morgan, Ferguson. Lewis Morgan went to oh, MLS, and then yeah. Lewis Ferguson and Aaron Hickey have went out and Celtic. Did we not get a guy out to? Henderson Henderson went yeah, to Italy yeah, yeah Henderson still went to Italy so there's obviously like well-worn paths for these players going out there Porto Porto was the other one Stephen oh, Welsh yes, linked which, right. which would be a sensational move for him so I think yeah what you said first is is really the, the most pressing point for Stephen Welsh he's getting to an age I think that Scott Robertson has been kicking around at Celtic mm. for a long time and it has all but been confirmed that he's on the way out but I think that's what basically was told to him at the time like you need to go and play football yeah. at, this, at this stage of your career Stephen Welsh has done really well for Celtic he's made quite a lot of appearances for a guy who splits opinion I think is, is probably fair to say but I think it's probably time for him to, to move on as much as I, I'd like to, to hold on to him and he does fill that quote. I don't really like boiling it down to that, but the quota for, for Champions League players and all that, I don't like the attaching that mm. to him because that's not really what you want to hear as a footballer, is yes. it? You're here to tick a box. It's not, but, it's not where you see no. your career going, you know? No. Uh, I've, I've actually got a problem with that, um, just to, to sideline us mm. all together, but see the homegrown players for Champions League thing? Yeah. I don't think it's fair. Why? Because it, I think it should be tiered. But based okay. on, see if you're Spain, I have loads of homegrown players. <laughs> yeah. See if you're Scotland and you're like 50th in the FIFA rankings or mm. something like that. I don't think it's fair. To, like, to, you know what? To, uh, You've charmed me. It's, it's for another day and all mm. that, but just where we were on the subject. But yeah, Stephen Welsh, I can't, can't help but think it's maybe a good time for him. I don't have any of the same concerns over the, oh, but that's not right for your career or anything like that, because basically anything that is going to get him regular football at a decent level is going to be good for his career at this stage. Yeah, he seems a wee bit unlucky with the wee niggly injuries, yeah, doesn't yeah. it? It seems I... to be, oh, he's in and then he'll get a niggly injury and he's out. And I kind of feel for him because he comes in when he's needed and if he doesn't have a good game, oh, he's no good enough. But it's very rare that players just get put in and then are instantly can play to the level they they can yeah. right away. He's always going to be up against like rustiness, match fitness and all that. So he gets put in, he does a job. When he came in during the, the season we do not speak about, he was possibly the only bright spark yeah, in yeah. there. Yeah. I like him. I think we can't always be Aidan McGeady or Kieran Tierney. We can't always be that guy that comes in and cements a first team place and goes on and leaves. We've seen it with Ralston. We see it with Welsh. These are good guys to have about. They... They know the club, they know the city, but more so that they're decent players and they won't be taking up big wages. And look, you kind of do need to get what it takes to play for Celtic. You need to be shown that you can go through the youth and get into Celtic. So you don't need guys coming in and holding down first team places. Stephen Welsh should be great to have as. Does Stephen Welsh play for Celtic? Uh, yes. Hmm. I I'm think... just going to the Brendan Rogers thing. Remember that Brendan Rogers <laughs> quote that. You play for ah, Celtic talking, when you actually ah, right. play for Celtic just because you you come here and you train and you've got the strip and the boots doesn't mean you play for Celtic. I just wonder, and I was, being, I was being slightly facetious there, but I wonder if Stephen Welsh sits not taking any part in any of these games, makes the bench sometimes. I wonder if he sits going, this is playing for Celtic. This is what I thought it would be. I yeah. think maybe he's 
maybe need to give him a wee bit more credit. He might be the one agitating for a movie. He's like, look, I love the club. I came through here, but at the end of the day, I want to play football. Yeah, and that's what I was going to say. Like, we, I can say, look, Stephen Welsh is fine at Celtic as a fourth choice centre half. Maybe he doesn't want that. No. Maybe he wants to play football. Look, again, he's been here at Celtic. He's won the league now. He's won trophies. He's played under a good manager. Maybe he wants to play football. And like, I can't sit here and criticise players for... Oh, I sit here and criticise players of like in the past that just sit and take a wage. Like, do you not want to play football? So I can't sit here and criticise a guy for wanting to go and play football. I'd prefer it if he stayed because I think he's a decent player to have his backup, but I can understand if he's got bigger ambitions than that. So in addition to me describing him as a box ticking exercise, Melly, you've also added he's cheap and he's fine <laughs> yeah. as a fourth choice yeah. centre half. Just the love pouring out of his <laughs> first team. I would really show a lot of respect to these. <laughs> these the, what, he's one of our own. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> um, we're about to be gazumped though. Uh, Chogu Song, I think is how you pronounce it. Um, I, I don't say that to be rude I say that because I'm famously bad at pronouncing right, names right. on this podcast as people might understand <laughs> um, we were in a transfer tussle with Mainz of Germany but right. they've backed out Celtic are just waiting to make the final bid but there was reports today that Rangers are interested two things I think about that one his agent is obviously yes. trying to get my move so he's obviously going to pick up the phone to Rangers yep. and two stop copying our homework you absolute <laughs> lame asses <laughs> I know uh. Just oh, so who are you signing Celtic? We better get them. just fuck off. Players, uh, you can see the report's been written already. It'll be mm. if Celtic sign them, it'll be Rangers reject signs for Celtic. If Rangers sign them, it'll be a, a good old fashioned gazumping, yeah. won't it? But you're right, it's like the Tom Lawrence thing all over again. He's just agents picking up the, the phone to as many, was uh, one, uh, as, as many clubs as he possibly can. Do you go straight to the second place team if you're <laughs> the agent without calling the first team? That's a bit of an oversight, isn't it? <laughs> well, yeah. But, but so if uh, what I would say on this is, seems like a good player. Again, impressed a little bit. The World Cup scored a couple of goals. Um, I've already said that there's not really too much to be read mm. into that because there'll be hundreds of games at club level to look into pr before that. Seems like a good player. If Celtic want him, they'll get him. Yeah, I fully believe that. I, I do believe that. I've believed that for a long time. If Celtic want a player they get the player and if Celtic are cool on it or they have other interests or they have other targets then the, the player ends up at Rangers I do wonder sometimes though if you know rather than saying again because I'm a Celtic fan rather than saying a oh, good job in the agent you know agent's not doing his job part of me's like well, well hold on a minute because we we instigated the interest we bring you over here for a meeting and then while you're here talking to us you just sneak off and see if you can get more money across the road if it's them you want to fucking play for go and play for them <laughs> don't play us off against each other spotted in the loudin <laughs> <laughs> but, that, but that's just the way it works but he I think it's been identified, or not, I don't think it's pretty obvious, Mel, he's been identified as a replacement for Yakimakis. Yeah, again, this is, Celtic's business seems to be, Celtic are interested in this player, then they sign him pretty much the next day because mm. we do a business on the lowdown. This one seems to be a bit drawn out, doesn't it? It seems a bit different. Maybe that is the agent making some, trying to drum up interest. It's Mines are in from then they've withdrawn, so Celtic are front runners. It seems to be all playing out on Sky Sports and all yeah. that, which is... It's not like Celtic doing their no, business right. that way. So I don't know how much of it is true, but there seems to be enough reporting that there is something in it. So if we get them, we do. But again, it's Celtic go out and sign players and then I don't know anything about it. Then they seem to be signed. So when these drawn He's out... kind of sounded like you took that personally, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> sign all these players, Celtic. I don't know anything about it. <laughs> should, should they let me know? <laughs> uh, we kind of go... Uh, sort of, oh, I really wish we had a signed him. Remember uh, that in the summer it was the... De Souza was it the defensive midfielder who went to Espanol? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Never heard of him since. I think he got sent <laughs> yeah. off recently. So we kind of get attached to these players that maybe we were in for. And then when that came out, and said, "I don't need a player like that. We're no interested in him." So if he signs, he signs. If he signs for the Huns, fuck up. <laughs> there you go. It's cutting insights there. Look. Iwata has signed he looks like an intriguing player we have a full scouting podcast for him patreon.com slash 20 minute times you can get that um, it's a position that Celtic as you touched upon the scouting podcast mainly, I've tried and I'd not consider this until you'd actually mentioned it this sort of he's sort of a kind of defensive midfielder but he plays a number of positions a bit of a utility player really interesting prospect really interesting sounding player but it's a position that we have tried to recruit in almost every window and we've not successfully managed it and it's also an indication that when you were talking about you know the clear out and get rid of the players we've got a huge squad to get in we're, we're yeah. starting to we're starting to get a bit bloated again aren't we including the players that are on loan who you think are going to return yeah it seems to be a problem position but it's not actually a problem because we have a really good player there mm. in Cal McGregor so Cal McGregor's always going to play he's the captain do you move him forward <sighs> 
and possibly, but we thought this every time Celtic have brought in a player like this. Yes, Iwata has been the MVP player of the year in Japan, but like, players have came with big reputations and nobody's been able to oust Cal McGregor yet. I think he possibly a better pedigree than McCarthy, Idiguchi and Abelgard. They all seem like ah, maybe squad players, mm. putting it mildly, but this guy seems maybe as a first team player, but I just, I just don't see... Cal McGregor's going to play, so do we move him forward? And whose expense is that at? Because Hatati's going to play if he's fit. Moyen O'Reilly, I think O'Reilly will be back on good form soon as well. So Celtic have got plenty of players there, but but Ange's had them before and we're bringing in players. And we've seen with most of the players, not all of them have to play every week. Mm. So he's bringing in a squad now. So I'm really interested to see how this one goes because even... Alex the Scout was really intrigued by it as well. So It's a, it's an interesting one, Stephen. Um, it was reported that uh, Ange did want him last year, but he didn't want to take too many of yeah, Yokohama's yeah. best players, so we've had an agreement we would wait a year to get him. The midfield area is quite congested. I don't mean like on the park, but I just mean we've got Abelgard, who we presumably expect to leave. They're all gone. They're, see, that's what, that's what I'm coming to. Adeguchi, Scott Robert, Those three guys are going to go. James McCarth, you know, they're all, it's, it's clear out time, isn't it? Really? Sorrow. Sorrow's your back, due oh, back soon as well. Oh, so yes. <laughs> huh? He's gone as well. I mean, that's Iwata, even if he doesn't play that much, even if he is just the sort of the competition for Callum McGregor or even just back up for Callum McGregor. It just means it's a sort of condensing of that position. We can clear it five players in the place <laughs> and we're water, basically. It just it makes sense in that regard. Having never seen the guy play apart from the the clips here and there, having never seen the guy play a full game of football, I'm confident that that can at least take care of that. It yeah. just it clears it potentially four or five useless players and we bring him in and he can play a number of different roles within the squad even if he is even if he's just the backup to the backup even if it's the next time Callum McGregor's out and O'Reilly just drops back there and Iwata is still nowhere to be seen I'd still be more comfortable with that than just collecting all these sort of odd players that well I just had there. a quick I just had a quick look on the Celtic website there and to my mind we've got 16 players in the squad in the, the first team squad is, who are in and around the first team squad who are never going to play for us. Really? I, oh, right. That's including everyone on loan. And we're talking about the Scott Baines and James McCarthy's who, who are still here. They, they are never, that's, that's a lot. Yeah, yeah. I, and you would expect more incomings in this window as well. I think that's, it's always the nature of a, of a club like Celtic because we sign so many players on relatively cheap. I mean, I mean across Europe, we are one of the lowest paying mm. leagues. Like we, we consider... Four million, a lot of money, right? But we we take up a lot of punts, not punts. They're not, they're obviously researched, and you try and you try and do your due diligence and Nowadays. get it. As, yeah, you try and get it as close to as you know as sure thing as possible. But in that market, we are going to sign a lot of players who don't work out. So we do kind of we've always got a huge churn. The Celtic have always got a lot of sort of one to two million pound players that are just sort of floating about the, the floating about the office that don't quite work. Loads of them have now under Ange Postacoglu, which is why I'm quite confident in Iwata coming in that, that he can take care of this position. The The track record is very good, but we do still get an awful lot of players who don't work out. Even the, with the amount of churn that Celtic do have, the amount of turnover in terms of players, you're always going to have two or three that don't mm. work out. That's that's good going, yeah. to be honest. That you, you look at Ange's transfers, it's only really Aide Gucci and James McCarthy that haven't contributed to the club so far. So I think that's a, a fairly decent record. So if we do accumulate the odd you know, bit of bloat here and there in this squad, right? <laughs> it's, it's Christmas, Christmas time. time. <laughs> it's, it's time to me. I'll just, just ask Alfie uh, what, what it's like uh, try, try to keep the weight down. But uh, I, it's fine. I, I'm fine with it. On there's a small uh, issue of some football. What bumper, oh, bumper right, episode? Right. Bumper episode. On this has turned out to be episode. Aye. Yeah, some of that played. Celtic v Kilmarnock. Uh, Danny McKinnis turned up with his Kilmarnock team, got exactly what he deserved, <laughs> and um, I, you know, was really happy for Rio Hitati man of the match. Yeah, well, it was a it was quite an odd game in that nothing happened in the first half at all. There yes. was a goal. There was a goal. Jota scored a goal, but it seemed like it was about forty minutes of absolutely mm. nothing happening. It was I, a weird game, wasn't it? The first half flew in, absolutely flew in with very little incident, and then. Uh, the last half hour or so last half hour 35 minutes exploded into life and it was absolutely great fun I thoroughly <laughs> enjoyed it mad chances going on and a guy we've spoken about a lot tonight but Yakimakis could have had a hat trick he mm. looked right up for it looked to show how dangerous he can possibly be in there but Hatati just sprung to life more than anyone else as well because I don't think he had a particularly great first half but it, if you chop it off if that doesn't count the first half doesn't count that was a practice run for the yes. second half right then he was man of the match Weirdly, statistically speaking, and I know that's been popular over the weekend yes. here for, for yep. Celtic fans, 
But Starfield was statistically the best player in the park in terms of the amount of touches he had, the amount of passes he played, accurate passes, duels won or not. I thought he had a really good game as well. But in terms of just bringing the crowd to life and getting that game won, Rio Hatate was but right in there. Let me ask you a simple question, Melly. Yes or no answer. Uh, is Rio Hatate good enough? Yes. Okay, perfect. Stephen? <laughs> yes. He's a, Rio Hatate, he's a player we've spoken about a lot in this podcast. Um, Stephen, modelling a singer. Yeah. That, that's a one of one, isn't it? It's Unique. one. That's wow. single, yep. Single. Might not be single for long. Piece. <laughs> um, the, the thing about him is, Melly, he's, he is a, a maverick. He's a majestic footballer in there. He makes things happen. He tries things. He's the sort of player fans love to watch in midfield. Yeah, well, that, I personally love it. I don't want to speak for anyone, but I, I personally love to watch him. I know you two do. Yeah, that, that's the whole point. You go to the game and in the first half, you go, you could get hooked at half time, but <laughs> Celtic yeah. weren't playing well at all. And then the second half, you're like, He's unbelievable. He he can just do this thing where he's a pleasure to watch. You go to the game and you think, oh, I'm looking forward to seeing Hitati today. He's brilliant in there. Again, he's another player. Much like Maeda, I can't pigeonhole him in with somebody else or say he's like somebody else. I've, again, he's a rare, rare find for Celtic. He's just great to watch. There's parts of his game where he's dipping the shoulder and turning away and driving into the box. He's driving in there and... The only thing that was missing from his second half on Saturday was he hit the post and instead of it going in, it would have topped off a top-class performance from him. But Celtic were in control of the game, winning 2-0. And it was just, it was kind of like one of those showings you see Real Madrid win and they win quite comfortably. And you do, Luka Modric is just a great football to watch. Not comparing them to him, but it was just that type of performance. Thing you have, thing you yeah, have. That's, 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 okay, that's, that's then. what a comparison is, isn't that's it? That's for Stephen? other people to decide, yeah. I think, there. Yeah. Yeah. Real Modric Hatati, I'm calling. <laughs> it was just one of those ones you come away and go, he was utterly class, mm. and there's no numbers, there's no data that can show it. All we can do is watch him and go, I love watching that guy play I mean, football. He, I mean, without going too far down this rabbit hole, Stephen, he's involved in everything. Like, he might not yeah. be causing the assists, he might not be, but he is in almost everything that happens when Celtic score. Real Hattati's involved in it. Oh, definitely. And you, you, you can just trace it back a couple of different moves. It doesn't always have to be the assist, although he did set up the the goal. That I only found it was an own goal much later. From mm. In the stadium, it seemed very much like it was Kyogo. Yeah, in yeah. The last I only touch. found out when you said it. It was the <laughs> next day. I yeah. found out it was, a, it was an own goal, but he played that pass. And I've, I've maintained for ages, right, see when we talk about... Uh, Playing against these teams, and I, I can't really be bothered going into Derek McInnes's tactics. So talk, know, you know what you're getting. We it. talk about them a lot. Yeah. Ever since we started this podcast, Derek McInnes has been a meme for the way, <laughs> yeah. for the way he sets his teams it's, up. It's just always so obvious because like Bernabe is the the smallest player in the park. If not him, then Greg Taylor would replace him, and he's the smallest player in the park. So they just shell balls on top of them all the time. But there's never any never any follow up to that. Mm. It's like right, you've punted it on top of the left back. Who Bernabe is actually quite decent for his height. Uh, he's decent and aggressive in the air. So it's not he's not. The, the pushover that they think he is what's next though yeah. <laughs> see when you yes, punt it up to yeah. it on top of the left back and he wins some and he wins well, he probably won about half of his aerial duels what's next mm. what's the what's the what's plan B after that because There's there no doesn't seem to be one guy <laughs> to, so I again Derek McInnes' tactics there for, for all to see but Hatate he he played the pass in behind the defence that I'm always talking about we're always talking mm. about as well because everyone fo falls into that default where if Celtic aren't at full clip then we start going, Niga the big man in there, Yakimakis is the guy, he's he's suited, he's more suited to this game. But I've always firmly believed that the way you beat these teams is by playing balls into the box that they don't like, that mm. they are uncomfortable with, and it's always balls in behind the defence. Hatate wasn't a get to the byline and cut it back one, it was a deep one in behind the defence, in between the defence and the keeper that they didn't know how to deal with. You saw it every time, they don't know how to defend against that, very few teams do, mm. which is why it's such a valuable you know, attack to, to play, to, to utilise. Shelling balls into the box doesn't work against these teams. They no. just header it away. So uh, he was he was very effective in that and he created the second goal among various other things. But he's always, I've said that so many times, but he's at the heart of almost everything Celtic do well in games. A, a phenomenal player. I just think if, you, if you're like, if you're, sort of wondering is Hatate any good if, if you're curious about whether or not he's actually good enough or he is a good player just watch the Celtic play football <laughs> um, another good player worth mentioning who we sort of touched on earlier on AJ I mean that Pete Davison looking man he's, <laughs> he's good isn't he he's good he's an odd looking character really? isn't he but he's he eight. loves it He's thoroughly enjoying himself, mm, isn't he? Yep. He gave himself a big, not not literal, but a big pat in the back for a massive tackle he had. He was right oh, in front uh, of us at the game, thundering in a big tackle and walked away from it with a big grin in his face. 
He's playing now like he's been here for years. Yeah, he, that's he one really thing does. I did say in the Discord as I well. Know, that's right? a massive cliche, right? But uh, and it just fits though, it, and so does he. Mm. It just it feels like he's very much part of this team already, and it's softening the blow of Juranovic leaving. I think it almost you you'd be forgiven for for you'd be forgiven rather for forgetting Juranovic is even there because he's sitting on the bench and no one's thinking about him at no. all. Was there any point during that game where you thought, need to get Juranovic on here, yeah. the, the guy who was brilliant in the World Cup? Didn't enter anyone's head because Alistair Johnson is in there, slotted straight in seamlessly and he's playing really well. He's playing well and he's everywhere. That yeah, seen, yeah. Uh, the, the number 10 can float about, but he was popping over up on the left-hand side. He was and he really taken to this role at Celtic and again, it's the due diligence that Stevens diligence that Stephen talked about earlier Celtic found this player that they thought can fit into the system because you can see it in all the attributes he has that look, he does slot in seamlessly and as if he's been there because he's a good player and he has everything Celtic require I'll, I'll, again I like watching him play I think he's got the enthusiasm he's pacier than I thought he was after seeing him at Brooks. he's got the heart, the desire His energy is incredible and he just looks like one of those guys who enjoys playing football and you can see it on his face. So I'm really looking forward to how he settles in with Celtic. He's got off to a good start in two games. There will be a wee dip at one point, but Celtic have got able deputies that can come in. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how he plays out because yes, we'll talk about Juranovic and we only talk about these players because we're sort of pining for them. But if Juranovic leaves and Alistair Johnson is a good player, we'll not be pining for Juranovic. Um Different ball game. See, uh, see you next week at Hamden or something. Was the tweet from Kamarnock? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Try what, playing with the ball this well, time. I was, going to say, I was going to say, what have you got up your sleeve, Kamarnock? Because Derek McInnes has been playing. We've been doing this podcast for nearly what seven or eight years. Every single Derek McInnes team plays <laughs> football the same way. So has he been? Has he been holding out this one special way to play? And he's going to reveal it all at Hamden. Going to bring back Chris Burke for this one. <laughs> By God, that's Kyle Lafferty's music. Oh, Where's like, he been? What that music sounds like? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's a flute. <laughs> <sound. laughs> <laughs> 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 By God, it's Kyle Lafferty's. Mrs. Lafferty's little boy. He's back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it could, there could be any number of surprises up uh, Derek McInnes's altogether too tight sleeve. But <laughs> oh, no, it, it will be different. I just said that after the game. We're, we're going to, uh, well, we're halfway through a double header against Kilmarnock. It will be different because it's a neutral venue, all that stuff, but it's still heavily fancy Celtic to get yeah. the job done. I don't really see anything from Kilmarnock. And feels like he just has been at Hamden. I feel, yeah, and I feel like uh, Kilmarnock have reached that stage now where even Kilmarnock, as, as lowly a little slugs mm. team they are, are being held back by Derek McInnes, much like Aberdeen were all those years ago. So I I, I don't really see much from them. They had some decent players. That, that, was it Murray came on off, off the bench, looked quite skillful at the weekend. But nah, I, I'm seeing an easy, easy route. If you like this podcast <laughs> and you're not already on patreon.com slash minute Tims, then you can do a number of things to help us out. You can leave a comment on YouTube, you can subscribe, you can leave us a review on iTunes, you can rate us on Spotify, you can buy a badge, you can retweet us, you can do loads of things to help us out if you're not already on Patreon. But of course, if you're on Patreon, we very much appreciate you. And if you're just listening and watching this, then thank you and see you next week. 